Now, I got the new Raptor in May this year. Wow, the lighting is super bad. There we go. So I got this in May this year and I've loved it so far. There's a couple of challenges. Gas mileage is horrendous, but that's not why you buy a Raptor. Now I go hunting obviously all the time and I wanted to put like a light bar on this without it being like obnoxious and in your face. Now they are from Australia and they shipped this awesome parcel to me. And today we're gonna try install this on the front of the Raptor. Now what's really cool is the lights sit behind the grill, which is something I'm stoked about. So it still keeps the sort of clean appearance and just tucked away neatly behind the grill. This is a bolt-on kit. All the wires and things are there already. Now you need to know something about me that uh, I'm not an audio electrician. So this is gonna be very interesting. So let's see what tools we need and uh, let's get cracking. First things first, we have to remove this, what do they call this? The grill cavity cover, which is this guy over here and it should simply pop up and I'm basically just gonna use this to not lose anything. And what's really cool about the Raptor is that it's got, do these get pulled out like that? That lifts. Um, what's really cool about the Raptor is there's like pre-wiring basically throughout this whole car with auxiliary switches. So we should be coupling this up to switch six. So it's not gonna be linked to my high beams or anything. It's gonna be a complete separate switch. Let me get these screws out and let's pop this guy off. Right, now something to note, these screws didn't come out great. They just, as you can see, they're meant to be taken out with a Phillips, but they're not coming out. So I'm gonna have to find a way to pry these out. Quite a few of them did come out, but perhaps if we pull on it a little bit and then give it a turn, see if we can get some something going here but I obviously don't want to break anything in my grill okay so that's not doing anything is this one gonna work with us nope nope okay now here's what I'm resorting to is I'm prying these out uh, let's see if I apply some pressure like that if they would then like to work with me Yeah, there we go. As soon as I could give it a little bit of a lift and turn, it came out. So, and then after you have that out, you have to pop these little inserts out. But uh, pretty annoying when a screw doesn't work like it was designed to. Um, I wonder if it's a combination just of dust and muck and stuff that has accumulated in here because <laughs> I've definitely been using my Raptor as it was designed to be used, which is rough. Okay, so with a bit of effort, I have uh, finally gotten this cover off. Um, this stupid design on the screws. Let's pop that off to the side here. Okay, next. This is one of those rare occasions where I'll actually read a manual, and so far it's been very good. Remove the two bolts attaching the grill. Look at it there and over there. Okay, so this is just a simple 8mm socket at a slight angle, so we've got to remember that when we're coming back into this grill. Okay, so our next challenge is removing this bottom trim piece here, which is freaking on there. So, uh, I know how it clips in at the back, but uh, I'm so scared of damaging the grill I want to try fashion something to sort of hook underneath and see if we can pry it out like that. Should be fun. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, well, seeing as I don't have the right tool, I'm actually going to try something what I'm probably going to be super risky, is I'm going to try make like a prying tool with a flathead screwdriver and try not to damage this front section. I'm a little bit nervous about this, not going to lie. Um, there are specific trimming tools that you can buy for jobs like this, but I find if I pull down there, okay, that's a result. It didn't break, it just popped the clip out the back. <laughs> Okay, my tool seems to be doing the job. 
by far the most dodgy part of this so far. Great success! <laughs> that was nerve wracking. Okay, next there are three bolts located here. And uh, I think this should be the point where, although most of these threads are so small that it doesn't like, I'm not really gonna go grab my cordless drill for these. Um, let's do that. This is, reminds me of my Land Cruiser project. I don't know if you guys have seen that video. Uh, yeah, this one's a little bit tighter. I might need to go grab my cordless drill but it's all so far eight millimeter sockets. Um, update on my Land Cruiser project. I also got some really cool ultra vision lighting stuff um, for that project, which is still ongoing. Uh, currently the motor's being assembled because I'm redoing the whole motor. It's got a 1UZ Toyota uh, slash Lexus motor that's going in there. So excited about that. Oh, I did actually manage to break one of those clips on closer inspection. But I don't think it's gonna be a big deal, nothing a little bit of super glue can't take care of. Alrighty, we made it to page two. Pop the clips at each headlight by pulling outwards from the vehicle and remove the grill. <laughs> okay. Alrighty. Oh, I need to disconnect some hoses. Unless I could just do that. Okay, I'm going to try to do that so I don't have to disconnect any of these hoses and things. Which should save me a little bit of time. Goodness, this has crushed a bug or two. I'm on like 12,000 kilometers already since May, so I've done quite a bit of driving of this. Right, so our next step is going to be, there's like all lack of places to mount things. So we have to mount this U bracket, because basically how these lights work, they sit in the center and they're all going to be mounted off of this. But I mean, kudos on the packaging on this. Very, very cool. All right, that goes like that. And then this is gonna require a little bit of finessing. There we go, there's that guy tightened. I just used my phone's reverse camera to kind of give me a little sneaky peeky as to what's going on in there. Next, we're quickly gonna remove this clip. All righty, now we go in with this bracket over there. So quite honestly, so far so good. This is the bit that has me worried. The electrical side. So, <laughs> we're getting there soon. Uh, what is next on our list? I think just this is very sketch. Having this rest here, there's no wind luckily today, but if this manages to fall off, it might damage your car a little bit. So we've got that bracket onto our next page. Damn, this is about the time we should crack our first beer. Because we are halfway through the job, basically. So we're gonna go light bars next. That's exciting. So this is what they look like. Super sturdy. Um... Oh, <laughs> it's like badass. <laughs> Doom. That is gonna be super, super cool. Okay, right, let's figure out the orientation and take it from there. I'm actually gonna go grab a knife quick. I think in my neighboring country, Namibia, I'm not sure. I know you can't have exposed light bars, but technically these wouldn't be exposed. Wow, my cat just came around this corner. Very nice, but look how cool these look. Very, very cool. So they go like this. And it's getting all the thread started. Obviously it's gonna be the exact same thing on the other side. So for the purpose of the installation, we'll speed this section up. And I think what we need to do is we need to go for a drive tonight and uh, see what our results look like with and without. And we'll go somewhere relatively secluded where there's not a lot of other light. Now I'm not gonna super tighten them up just yet. I obviously need to put in the other one first, but 
What we want to do is we want to manipulate this angle a little bit just to make sure that the beams are in fact shining where we want them to be shining. So I'm just going to kind of leave them good enough where I could still angle them a little bit after we get this harness installed. Now I have a meeting now, so I'm, everything is still kind of loose. I'm just going to pull in the car, do my meeting, and then we'll get to the electrical stuff. So it's probably going to be dark by the time we get there, but I'm going to try and reverse that we can continue our work in the garage. Alrighty, now for the electrical part. Now if the video looks slightly different, obviously we're in the motorhome garage now. And last night when I was on my laptop Zoom calling of my friend from Ultimate Reloader, I showed him the lights that I'm putting in and I bumped my camera and it smashed its lens on the garage floor. So, yes, very frustrating indeed. But here we are, I was able to successfully reverse with I kind of just put everything back in place. So our lights are down there. Everything is looking pretty freaking good. Um, but now, as I said yesterday, this is kind of the part that makes me nervous because I have literally no experience with like audio electrical stuff. So, but the instructions so far have been pretty clear. So let's see if we can finish this. I think we're almost there. This is the home stretch. So what we need to do now is get this wire out here. So I'm gonna cut that electrical tape. Now it's really cool. It's basically pre-wired into the car. So we're gonna cut that electrical tape there and then open up this so we can add a little, um, what is that thing called? Uh, just a little terminal on that wire. Over there. Okay, now we need to cut off this heat shrink that is already on there and free up about a centimeter worth of wire. They've really gone all out on that heat shrink, wow. Light work. Okay, so the wire only goes to there, so that's good news. It really sucks when you nick a finger doing something like this, which we have so far avoided, and we're gonna keep it that way. Perfect. Now we're gonna strip about a centimeter on each one of these wires. Now I don't have wire strippers, but usually, kind of cut around. Use the wire strippers that Jesus gave me. There we go. Built in wire stripper, baby. Don't do that at home, folks. Okay, now this guy's gonna go in like that. And we are gonna clamp these guys over there. Okay, happy days. Okay, so now the black is gonna go into the vertical pin like that you should hear a click that's it and the yellow or orange is gonna go into this pin like that and we should hear a click i'm just gonna take my pliers and make sure they proper in 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 Alrighty, we're onto our last page now we have to connect the wiring hardness to the battery terminals over there and then we're gonna feed the harness across the engine bay and plug in our light bars to do a test before we assemble the hood and the grill and all of those things back. So we've got our wiring harness. We have to connect these to the battery. That is what we're gonna be doing last because as soon as we connect these, obviously everything is live. This we're just gonna mount somewhere near the battery on like a M18 or a M8 bolt rather. This is gonna plug into that little T section we did there just now. Now, if you're buying this kit, these two ports obviously go into your light bars. What I'm gonna do first is kind of connect everything up, test it, and then I will tuck everything in neatly, I think, although I'm kind of pushed for time, so maybe I'll try to do it like that, just test everything, and then quickly connect everything up and tidy it up, because I actually have a range booking that I need to get to. Then you will see, if you get this kit, that there's also this super long extra piece with a little switch, okay, that you can use to turn on and off. Now obviously we have a Raptor and we have a built-in auxiliary switch that we're plugging this in, so we're not gonna be using this section. So for now, I'm gonna leave this on actually, just to test everything, but after that, if everything works, I should be able to cut this off essentially here, just put some heat shrink on, make sure they're not connecting each other, um, because this little section we don't need, because our switch is already inside the cab. With that said, now we get to the bit that I've been <laughs> sort of scared of this whole time. 
Okay, that is connected. Okay, that is both connected. This switch we do not need. Now we are gonna connect the battery pack. Ooh, almost dropped it into the engine bay. Oh, that would have sucked. Okay, so this guy is gonna get connected over there. We wanna make sure that doesn't touch anything. Okay, I'm gonna put that fella over there. So maybe, let's go this way around and then start this guy in. Now I'm quickly gonna just hold this guy there because that should be enough of a connection for us to test everything. That guy, we can just rest over there. And uh, moment of truth, here we go. Okay, to be honest, I am indeed a little bit nervous. Yes! Woo! <laughs> so freaking stoked! Let's say, for example, you didn't have the switches inside, you can also obviously use the switch. Okay, so I am freaking stoked with how that came out so far. Um, I'm quickly just gonna secure this okie pokey down there. What's really cool is there is actually like an open terminal for you. Um, and I just had to grab a little nut that I had lying around. Okay, that ain't going nowhere. I have to now figure out how to root everything and make it neat and tidy. So what I'm doing now is I'm just shining these lights onto my wall at the back here because obviously it's daylight outside and I'm just lining them up with the actual high beams of the car to make sure that our fitment is aimed correctly because the last thing we want is like cockeyed lights. Okay, so now for the easy part, we're just gonna unplug stuff. It was getting crazy hot in here, so we're unplugging and we are gonna neaten everything up and then just put the grill back. Should be relatively easy from here on in, just the reverse of what we've already done. And there's a nice space here where you can hide stuff. So that is what we're gonna be trying to use as much as possible with some cable ties. So I've changed my routing plan a little bit because I was worried going through there might touch the radiator. So I've come from this relay. Underneath this, I just loosened this guy up a little bit over here. Down there, and it looks pretty neat from the front. I'm just gonna do another quick test before we start hiding all the wires and the stuff. Okay, so I've relatively tidied up what I can. Plenty of cable ties used. You can see none of the wiring from the front here. So grill's gonna go back on now. A couple of things that I did change. I moved that terminal from at the back there and I just put a new bolt and a washer here. So I've hid it underneath this panel here. Then everything is running neatly along like this. I'm still gonna tidy up these wires. I did tape this connection that we made earlier and just cable tied that down here, which is nice and out the way. I must just remember not to leave any tools inside the bonnet. And now what I'm gonna do, I've got so much space underneath there to neatly fold in the switch. Now this extra switch that we've got for now, I'm just gonna tape this guy shut and then tuck all of this in here. Okay, so just doing a complete last check before we put all the stuff back. Everything is weather sealed and everything. So on, off, boom, shaka laka. Do these work, so if I put brights on, Yes, baby. Super, super cool. Now we can assemble the rest of the goodies. Yes, baby.